Hi everyone, Gwil from Fologram here. In this tutorial, we're going to provide a bit of a practical example of how to use synchronized parameters with an existing Grasshopper definition, and also uh, go over a fairly common use case for things like value lists, uh, sliders, and sliders used as incremental steppers, which we mentioned in the previous tutorial, which just introduced the sync parameters um, function in Fologram for Grasshopper, and now we'll, we'll look at that as a sort of deep dive in a practical application. So one really common use case for wanting to interact with Grasshopper definitions on the HoloLens or on your mobile phone is to change the information that you're um, needing for some sort of fabrication task, because you don't want to have to go back to a laptop and change a slider and whatever in your Grasshopper definition in order to get what you're seeing in AR to update especially if the person who's actually using the mixed reality device doesn't know Rhino and Grasshopper, which is often the case if you're working with um, like large teams of fabricators who aren't necessarily the people who are also building the Grasshopper definition. So I have a very simple Grasshopper definition here, which takes a lofted surface and divides it up into a bunch of bricks. You could use this definition for building curvy brick walls. It's not exactly the same way that we've um, built similar structures like this before in terms of the actual parametric model, but it's enough to give you a sense of what's going on. We'll quickly break down this parametric model. What's happening is we're taking some curves, which I've drawn in Rhino, so that if we edit the control points of these curves, we should see our wall update. Makes it nice and simple to make um, design changes. We can break our wall so it's unbuildable. Uh, they're getting lofted together parametrically. Then we're contouring that loft and able to set a height for those contours. We're dividing up each of the contours into some horizontal frames and even um, or the same number of horizontal frames for each uh, contour line. We're doing some fancy Boolean operations here. So we're making um, a cull pattern, which goes and removes or keeps a brick, then deletes a brick, keeps a brick, deletes a brick, and alternates that pattern for each contour line. So on the first course of bricks, it's deleting one, keeping one, deleting one, keeping one. On the second course, it's doing the opposite, keeping, deleting, keeping, deleting, keeping, deleting. And that's what this collection of components here does. Then we're making a box with some sliders so that we can control the geometry of that box, orienting it onto all of our um, contour planes, which we've just gone and culled, and joining all of the boxes by their contour line so that we end up with one mesh of boxes per contour and finally using a sublist component I'm just gonna edit the maximum value on this one so that we can control just the um, bricks that we want to see so this ends up being an application where we can view bricks in this curvy wall one course at a time as well as showing all the previous courses by changing this slider here. We also have a bit of control over this definition as a design model so we can control the geometry of our bricks like how wide they are and we can control the spacing between those bricks so we can make really skinny bricks or more conventionally proportioned bricks. So we're gonna sync these up in um, uh, with Fologram on our mobile device for this demo and we'll have a brick laying application. We'll also look at some different display modes, things like that. So to sync them up, um, to begin with, let's just ch sync this course option here and see what that looks like in AR. We haven't got a sync geometry component yet, so let's go and add that in as well so we can actually see our geometry. There we go, there's our brick wall. And we should be able to tap on the course button and step back down doop, 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 until we're seeing just that first course there. We've got a little bit of a um, delay in the uh, synced video as usual as well. Uh, so what we're going to do is for actual fabrication um, it's not so useful to see a solid brick 
what you typically want to see is an outline of the brick that you're laying. So you can place the physical brick inside of that outline um, and it's not obscured entirely by the virtual model. So we can just set the display mode for that and right click on it and we can just set wireframe mode which is going to um, show the outlines of all of the bricks. Sometimes that's pretty useful or we can set it as occluded wireframe which will hide um, our geometry which is behind any of our bricks which is in most cases more useful um, for fabrication. If we wanted to control that on our phone, maybe we want to be able to switch between wireframe, occluded wireframe, shaded, etc. We can do that with a value list. So let's make one here and double click on it to edit it. So let's call this wireframe and make the value wireframe. And we just have to be careful that we use the, uh, the names of all of our supported display modes. So let's make number two rendered. And number three, let's call that occluded wireframe. Okay. Wireframe rendered occluded wireframe. Let's just make sure that they're the same. Rendered wireframe, occluded wireframe looks good plug that in there and synchronize our value list. So we should be able to change the values uh, no, maybe not you might have to cast it to a display mode first Okay, I just had to figure out what I was doing wrong there. Um, when you use a value list with uh, text as the values, make sure you use quotation marks around the text, otherwise it outputs null. So something that I've learned then. But we can now go through and use our um, synchronized value list here to set the display mode. So we can input both uh, text into this display mo mode input I'm here for sync geometry. So if we give the name of the display mode that we want, Fologram's smart enough to figure that, that out and use it. Um, or you can input the display mode type from our types menu up here. So we've now got a way of setting the course and we've also got a way of changing the display mode um, on our bricks. If we wanted to use this as a fabrication tool, then that's sort of it. We would just locate this in space accurately using some markers and then we could go ahead and try and build it. If we're using it as a design tool, maybe we want to synchronize the width, depth and height of all of our bricks as well. And then we could control those in mixed reality um, and get a really good sense of how that's going to look. That might be particularly useful if you're trying to design in context. So you're trying to match, say, the um, brick course and geometry to an existing bit of brickwork which is on site, um, or wanting to get proportions to match up nicely with wherever you're constructing something. That's where having this design um, capacity within mixed reality could be pretty handy. Okay, so any existing grasper definition which has sliders, um, buttons, toggles, value lists in it, can be synchronized directly with Fologram and manipulated on your display. And you can use things like steppers in your model. Um, so sliders, which are integer values that you can increment one at a time to control uh, useful information like fabrication sequences for, in this case, things like bricklaying.